Hey everybody, it's Pastor Steve and Pastor Aaron of That Church. Remember, it's 4th of July. Woo! Hey, hey! So let's start off with a word of prayer and we're going to pray over this nation. Amen. What is that scripture that we, we base the praying over the nation? That's 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Now, we want to remember to, to do what it, it's, it's depicting there and telling us. The word is what we base our lives off of. It's the word that this nation was founded off of mm -hmm. by, right? Yeah. And we're going to read a scripture here that we we see that our founding fathers read in in preparation for writing the the documents that they wrote right yeah. the document the declaration, the declaration of, independence. of independence right yeah. so, so here let's read that okay psalm 33 <clears throat> verse 12 blessed and prosperous is that nation who has god as their lord now she's reading this in the TPT, the, oh, the Passion, the Passion Translation. Translation, right? So we look at and we see that that these men were 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 being um, let know they should focus in on what the Word says about a nation, right? How, how a nation should be set up, how a nation right. should should look. And with this scripture, we see this blessed and prosperous is that nation. That's this nation. That's right. And that's this church. Oh, it's that church. Do you see it? <laughs> yeah. Do you see how it calls it? That nation who has God as their Lord. Well, then blessed and prosperous is that church who has God as their Lord. Do you, do you see that? As, as you can have many different idols, many different things, I'm not saying that you can. Whenever you worship the Lord your God, it's Him alone, only Him mm -hmm. that you worship. Right. You see that? Yep. Everything else pales in right. comparison. He is number one. Mm. And not number one in a line of something, but He is the only true living God. That's right. There's only one God, and it is the Lord, our Savior, Jesus, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. The Father that he, he spoke of, they are three in one, Father, Son, and Spirit. Do you see that? And as we pray today over this service, as well as over this nation, right? pray right along with us. Be believing. It's it's those that move in faith, and as we'll see today, in love. Love and faith work together. As we move in love and faith toward this nation, praying for our leaders, do it right along with us. That's right. We are seeing changes throughout this whole country. Mm -hmm. All right? Yep. So, Father God, it's you that we, we have to have. We want this nation declared you the God of this nation. We declare that you are and God of this nation. And we do it again right here today. Mm -hmm. We declare, Father, you are our Lord, mm -hmm. our Savior. You're our God, Father, Son, and Spirit. We worship you. You are a great and awesome God. And we avouch you as God of this United States of America. And we declare that you are our God and it's in you that we trust and we look to you to straighten out the things that are here as your people grab a hold of your ways we see that we move forward as a people your people to set things right and we look to you as you're the strength you're the authority you're the the, mm -hmm. the God that is behind us before us, round about us, and see into us, and you're, you, you are concerned about that which we are concerned about. And you said, as we pray for these, our, those over this country, those that are in authority, 
that we could have peace, the peace you said we could have. And we thank you for your peace, Jesus, that you left with us. And we thank you that we have a nation following after you. We look to you as our God, and we honor you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Oh, Lord God. So, as, as we listen to God, we, we can then make his ways our ways. Right. And his thoughts our thoughts. Yeah. Right? And, and here, it, it's bearing witness with me. We should go back and, and look at that in Isaiah uh, 55. One, once again, it says, 55, 8, it says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Now, we're going to see people that made God's ways their ways today. And, and here, they were moved by God in a specific way. And we're going we're gonna to take these thoughts to heart and see how things start mixing together. Mixing love and faith together. Alright? We can be so thankful today, as we're mindful of what we're celebrating, that they put Jesus... They put God as Lord over this country. Yeah, and that's, that gives us a reason to be thankful to God for what those founding fathers did for us. So in verse 9 it says, For the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and your, my thoughts than your thoughts. Mm -hmm. For the rain and snow come down from heaven, the heavens, and return not there again, but water the earth and make it, make it, Make the earth bring forth and sprout, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word, God says, be that goes forth out of my mouth. This is his word. Right. Jesus spoke only that which he heard the Father say. And Jesus did only that which he heard the Father say. Or saw the Father do. Exactly. All right? Mm -hmm. So as we look at these things, this is what disciples do. And here, remember, this whole whole book that we're looking right. at is talking about the winged ox. And here, the anointed one and the one carrying that anointing. Right. Right? That sounds like me and you. That sounds and like us. And yeah. all of y'all. So <laughs> as, as we look at this, we take up a... A sacrificial aspect of being a priest in these days all of us remember Jesus is the King of Kings Lord of Lords right priest of priests all right that's what I want you to focus on that's good and we're supposed to move forth in strength and in power in his authority remember he said I <laughs> I have all authority, Jesus said. I have all authority and power given mm -hmm. unto me. Now you go right. in my name. That's right. Right? That's that's what we're seeing. As as we get then into chapter 7 today, we're going to see some things. But let's go back and do a quick review. And we're only going to look at um, two scriptures. Verse 35, but it says, But love your enemies and be kind and do good, doing favors so that someone may derive benefit mm -hmm. from them and lend. Wait, 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 how does lend and people deriving benefit from what you're doing? Well, it, it's not talking about so much money here as it is you're lending a hand, a helping hand to raise somebody up, to help somebody above where they're at. You know, if people, your neighbor needs help, uh, doing something, you go and lend a hand to two people get a better return on their labor than just one working by itself. That's what the Word says. So as, as we put the Word together, as Jesus said, we are, we're joining scriptures together, we're joining thoughts together from our Father so we can clearly see how to walk, right? right. And then we go to this um, verse 38 and this is where we we got into talking about get a giving message on Friday but it's talking about the same idea 
lending a hand. Give, and gifts will be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will they pour into the pouch formed by your bosom uh, of your robe and uh, used as a bag. For with the measure you deal out, with the measure you use when you confer blessings or benefits on others, it will be measured back to you. That's the part I want you to look at today. Right. So it is It is talking about money, but it is talking about we gave of ourselves first. We, we made Jesus the Lord of our lives that we could therefore walk with him. Or here, as Galatians 2.20 says, walk as him. And here, if we then put Ephesians 5.1 into the mix, we're, we're mimicking, we're, we're being like right. our Father. Imitating. Yep. Imitating, right? Yep. Okay, so as we look at those, I'm, I'm going to read one more. Okay. Why do you see the speck? Uh-oh, we're talking about a problem. We're, we're talking a problem about a problem when we start picking at each other, we start seeing problems with each other. That's not supposed to be. We're supposed to be walking in love, mm -hmm. as verse 35 was talking about. Right. But love, love. your enemies. Right. That's where it started. And be kind and do good. Mm -hmm. These are all talking about how you move in love toward your neighbor. Right? right? Okay. So, as we see Jesus moving in love toward his Father, you see him moving in love toward people. Right, even those accusing him. Right? You yep. see you see these things? Yep. So have a heart after God. Mm -hmm. Have a heart after people. Right. Do you see how these these are, are ever present in everything we're looking at? And here, mm -hmm. this is this is that other thing. The Ten Commandments. The first four are directed at God. Mm -hmm. The last six are directed at man. Right. So you move in faith toward God, you move in faith toward people. That's now, good. now every person out there is not going to be nice. <laughs> Why is that? Because things have been messed up. They took the wrong thoughts. The the first acquaintance with somebody might be harsh. But love will break that harshness mm -hmm. off them if you use it as a weapon. Right. As something to use. Just as faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, so faith worketh by love. Mm, yes. Do you see how those two work together? Mm -hmm. As we move in love and faith, something will happen. And we're going to see that as, as we, we look into this chapter. Amen. So we started off there. Now we're going to run through some of these scriptures. There's a lot of... A lot of There's a lot of good stuff here. A lot of good stuff in here. We don't want to just run past it but we can't stay on everything all right here we go after jesus had finished all that he had to say in the hearing of the people on the mountain he entered capernaum now a centurion and i need to stop there and say this centurion is a roman he's not a, a jew he's a roman he had a bond servant who was held in honor and highly valued by him who was sick and at the point of death and when the centurion heard of jesus he sent some Jewish elders to him, requesting him to come and make his bondservant well. And I think it's cool that he sent Jewish elders to him. He had a relationship. They weren't enemies. Yeah. I think that's really important. Yeah. And when they reached Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying, He is worthy that you should do this for him. What made him worthy? And, that's, and, that's a good question. And I'll, I'll keep it brief, like you were saying. What made him worthy? He honored God. He yes, honored he Jesus. Even though he wasn't a Jew, he honored Jesus. He now, honored him. Now, here in the Old Testament, it says, Those that exactly. honor me, yep. I, I will, will honor. honor. Yep. Do you see it? Yep. Why is Jesus doing something for this man that's honoring his nation? Mm. Yep, Honoring good. God yep. in his nation. Exactly. You see that? All right. And Jesus, did I finish that? For he loves our nation and he built us our synagogue at his own expense. That's one way this man honored God 
is by loving the Jewish nation and building them their synagogue at his own expense. And Jesus went with them, but he was not far from the house. The centurion sent some friends to him, saying, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not sufficiently worthy to have you come under my roof. Neither did I consider myself worthy to come to you. But just speak a word and my servant boy will be healed. For I also am a man daily subject to authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my bond servant, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled at him. And he turned and said to the crowd that followed him, I tell you, not even in all Israel have I found such great faith as this. And when the messengers who had been sent returned to the house, they found the bond servant who had been ill quite well again. Now, as, as we look into the things of this testimony, because right. it's a testimony, it's a mm-hmm. so we, we see that this is in uh, Matthew's gospel as well. And, and as we look at Jesus saying, uh, I haven't found such great faith right. as this man's. Right. In all of where? Where is he saying? Where did he say? In all of Jerusalem? I didn't mark it. I we we were we were pressed for time and here we still came came behind. Not even in all Israel. So in the family of God, in the Jewish people, right? Right. Those that are turned toward God, I have not found great faith as this. Now this reminded me that here, Elijah in his time went outside the country to a widow. This is something Jesus brings up in Nazareth to to kind of almost slap him in the face. You, you're you're not seeing this clearly mm-hmm. because they were judging him by the flesh. But in this man, this man is judging him by the God of the nation. Do you see that? And here. If this person's a good person and we're hearing these good things, God has to be with him. That's that's the thought pattern you, you kind of come to as you study this out. And Jesus says, such great faith. Right. Now, that that's what we see that the whole nation was supposed to be having, mm-hmm. but they weren't. Okay? So watch this next uh, occurrence this next testimony that comes out. I, I want you to see how Jesus, I, I, this this is something we, we learned, um, and, and I, I, I believe the, the understanding of certain things came out um, while we were even in Bible school. The, the Jewish scholars that, that uh, one of our, our teachers was working with and studying with came to um, because Jesus fulfilled all that was spoken of him. That's what the word says. Right. The, the word says he came to fulfill everything that the Father had already spoken about him through the prophets of old. And now him going to the city of Nain is what we're going to see next. Mm-hmm. They found that while we were in school. And and it's, it's, it's startling. It's, it's really a key point that shows you he went to do this directed by his father absolutely at a specific yes. day and time very much so it, it wasn't that he didn't have a long period of time i don't think to go through but he had to get there mm. and he got there he That's, pushed on yeah. and look how many people went with him all right verse 11 soon afterward jesus went to a town called nain And his disciples and a great throng accompanied him. Just as he drew near the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large gathering from the town was accompanying her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And he went forward and touched the funeral buyer, and the pallbearers stood still, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise from death. And the man who was dead sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Profound and reverent fear seized them all, and they began to recognize God. 
and praise and give thanks, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us, and God has visited his people in order to help and care for and provide for them. Now, God has visited his people in order to help and to care for and provide for them. Right. I want you to think of that as being you. God has sent you mm. to do this very thing. That is good. No, no, no. You're not the one doing the providing. Right. But God he is. is in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And he's sending you out. Right. Anointed to go forth with himself. Do you see that? Right. God himself is with you and in you and on you mm -hmm. to care for in order to help and care for and provide. Do you see that? And provide for people. Now, but look, they recognized God. And they praised God and gave thanks to God. In all of those things, we, we see that God is the one to be praised. Yes. Thanks. It's, mm -hmm. it's not so much us, but right. you are a vessel. You're, you're this ox. Mm -hmm. You're this one carrying the, yeah. the, the anointing, the right. wing. Yeah. Part of the, the anointing. <laughs> One more. <laughs> right. Being in a sacrificial aspect of a priest. Right. Now we're seeing Jesus being this way. I want you to see that you are supposed to be this way. As we watch Jesus and we look into Jesus, we're disciples becoming just like Jesus. Because that's what we see. Jesus goes... I think it was uh, 30 miles, 20 to 30 oh, okay. miles. You're talking about wow. 20 to 30 miles from Campernon to Nain. the city of Nain. And it wasn't a nice seacoast travel. Oh, right. It was through mountains probably. You're, huh? you're talking about, there was, uh, um, it was, the city of Nain was 700 feet above sea level. And, and it's a farm community. Hmm. Why is he going there? God Almighty hears the cries of the heart. Mm -hmm. This woman was in in that first stages of 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 complete poverty. The the husband of her was gone. Obviously, it must have been the only son she had is now right. gone. Right. And what is left? That that here. When the father passes away, the, the, the responsibility of caring for the mother right. is passed to the firstborn son. Mm -hmm. And when the firstborn son is gone, what do you got left? Was her, her thought is, God, you've got to fix this for me. And he she is. Was, she was crying out mm -hmm. to God as the one, remember the widow looks unto the father as her husband That's at right. that point mm -hmm. and that is what's happening here right. do you see how yeah. how perfect this is and jesus is sent carrying that anointing to fix the situation that's that's god seeing to the care of his people right amen right yep and on this fourth of july look at the people around you as we are heightened toward what God has done through this nation and here you and I and everyone else we have to be encouraged to move forward with God mm -hmm. to re put put this put this nation back where it was supposed to be at if you look and think about some of the things that were happening in the 30s and the 40s and the 50s people's hearts were turned back toward yes, God after definitely. that after the, the depression, after all of the things that they were going through, the wars and, and things, mm -hmm. as they were directing their hearts back toward God, they had re restoration. They had things set up better and better. Mm -hmm. They knew where their help was coming from. Though the wicked yeah. one was working all the time, mm -hmm. undermining, trying to take out a nation, this nation couldn't be taken out. Do you see it? Yep. Same with this time now. Here we go. And this report concerning Jesus spread through the whole of Judea and all the country round about. And John's disciples brought him, who was now in prison, word of all these things. 
And John summoned to him a certain two of his disciples and sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you he who is to come, or shall we continue to look for another? I have to ask myself, didn't John know? It's a question that, you know, I believe will be answered. So the men came to Jesus and said, John the Baptist sent us to you to ask, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we continue to look for another? In that very hour, Jesus was healing many people of sicknesses and distressing bodily plagues and evil spirits. And to many who were blind, he gave a free, gracious, joy-giving gift of sight. So he replied to them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the good news, the gospel preached to them. That's straight out of Isaiah 61, what he said he was anointed to come do. And isn't it interesting, they didn't ask for a sign, they asked a question. And they would have trusted and believed his answers. And yet in other places we see Pharisees and others tempting him, asking for a sign, and he wouldn't give them a sign. I want you to look at one other thing here. In verse 13 it says, he had compassion. Mm -hmm. Now... Compassion is different than love, but it's full of love. Yeah. Compassion is something that is moving, and, and you see Jesus being moved by compassion many times through the Word. That's what we're supposed to be moved by. It's the compassion of the mm -hmm. Father being shed abroad mm -hmm. in our hearts, and as we move forth in that compassion, it's God's compassion. Do you see it? That's good. And yeah. as we see that Jesus is being moved to heal all these people, restore people, put put things back right as if it never happened. Right. As as putting the devil out as if whatever he did never happened. Do you see it? That's good. That's what we're yeah. looking at. And that's the thought pattern I want you to have as you go forth into the world taking his anointing that you're going to have faith in God to put out the devil's work, completely erase it from the person's life that you're praying for as if it never happened. Get that, mm -hmm. that, that wor those words in your, your thinking, in your heart, and, and believe and ask the Father in, in the regards for people that he remove it as if it never happened. Mm. That's, that's the, what I'm hearing. Without right? the smell of smoke on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about All that. All of that, mm -hmm. right? Okay, verse 23. And blessed, happy, with life, joy, and satisfaction in God's favor and salvation, apart from outward conditions, and to be envied, is he who takes no offense in me, and who is not hurt, or resentful, or annoyed, or repelled, or made to stumble, whatever may occur. And the messengers of John having departed, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the desert to gaze on? A reed shaken and swayed by the wind? Then what did you go out to see? A man dressed up in soft garments? Behold, those who wear fine apparel and live in luxury are in the courts or palaces of kings. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? A fourth teller? Yes, I tell you, and far more than a prophet. This is the one of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who shall make ready your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women there is no one greater than John, but he that is inferior to the other citizens in the kingdom of God is greater in comparable privilege than he. Now, I want you to see questions that Jesus is asking. Right. And I, I want it to be questions to you today. As you look at these questions, think about why you came to Jesus. Sometimes we, we, we come down the road here. here we, we walked with the Lord for a while, and we forget about why we came to Jesus. Mm. And here... What did you go out into the desert to see? <clears throat> Talking about John the Baptist, the one that was sent before mm -hmm. the one, right? Right. 
Why did you go out there? Because God was calling his sons and daughters to repentance, to have the right heart, the right mindset, the, the right ways set in them, to, to put away the ways they were going. If you were a tax collector and you were stealing from people, because they, they figured it out. They, they figured out ways to charge extra so they could keep some extra. That, that's what mm. some of the accusations yeah. were, right? Yeah. And here, if, if they were you know, Roman centurions, because the Romans were going out to see him as well, not just all of Israel. Right. If, if we look at it as people were going because they were cut to the heart on the inside, they, they knew what they were doing was not right, and they wanted a way out. Mm. Think back to what you were doing. No, no, no. Don't look at those things. <laughs> but I want you to look at why you wanted free. We want freedom in this nation. Right. We want freedom from tyranny. <laughs> we want freedom for our children. Right. We want freedom to have a good life. To enjoy a good life. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus came for. Why? Why did why did Jesus come? John 10, uh, okay, so the thief comes not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Do you see how yeah. that is? Yeah. Jesus came that you could have a better life. Right, free from the effects of the evil one in the earth. And that's what I want you to focus on, that that's what you wanted. Yeah. You wanted a better life. You wanted free from guilt right that's and good free from sin right and as we came to god think of everybody you're going to come in contact this fourth of july mm -hmm. tell them freedom wasn't free jesus had to lay down his life for that freedom yeah that's good and here for this nation those stars and stripes those were about the blood of jesus as, as we look at the flag today, red, white, and blue for a reason, we saw that we were going to be free from the tyranny of another nation bringing freedom of worship, freedom of, of choosing our God for ourselves, right? As we choose our God today afresh, we want to move forward with these very thoughts to help others yeah. see what what he, what he came and what he's sending you to go do. Right. To, to set the captives free. All right? Here we go. And all the people who heard him, even the tax collectors, acknowledged the justice of God in calling them to repentance and in pronouncing future wrath on the impenitent being baptized with the baptism of John. I want you to see, it points out, even the tax collectors saw this. That, that which they thought was the most sinner of their day. Because a bunch of them were mm. Jewish people. And here, they're collecting taxes from their brethren. Which, a lot of those things were not supposed to be. And here, they're stealing from some of those people. And oppressing those people. That's why they thought they were much more sinners than everybody else. But if you committed one sin, mm -hmm. you committed all. You broke all the law by committing one of those, breaking one of those. Do you remember? So in life, as you come in contact with the people around you, in this nation and the other nations, wherever you are, remember, if you... If they broke one law, they broke them all. But you know what? Jesus came to set them free. Not, not, not denoting how many they, they were set free from. Right. But that they were sinners and they needed to be free. We all were sinners and we all needed to be free. See it? That's all right, good. here we go. But the Pharisees and the lawyers of the Mosaic law annulled and rejected and brought to nothing in their own lives God's purpose concerning themselves 
by refusing and not being baptized by him. John. That's, that's what is the opposite of doing this. Right. So you can't, you cannot force salvation over on anybody. No. It is a person's right. And if choice. they want to go to hell, they can go to hell. And you're going to see that those those are the kind of things that here we, we we've heard hellfire brimstone messages before, right? But is that the way to convict? You're not you're not the one that's convicting. It's the Holy Spirit that convicts on the inside the the world of these things, right? And helps them to see that they need free. All right. So to what shall I compare the men of this generation, and what are they like? They are like little children sitting in the marketplace, calling to one another and saying, We piped to you, playing wedding, and you did not dance. We sang dirges and wailed, playing funeral, and you did not weep. For John the Baptist has come neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, He has a demon. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, Behold, a man who is a glutton and a wine drinker, a friend of tax collectors and notor notorious sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated, shown to be true and divine by all her children, by their life, character, and deeds. Now, if we look at everybody in the world that is not saved as being little children, is that what he was saying? So to what shall I compare the men of this generation, and what are they like? Why is Jesus saying that every man, woman, and child on the planet that's not saved is like little like, children? Yeah. Because the Father is the Father of them all. And as we go out and we see the people, no matter how ugly they're being, they're still just acting out as little children, being led by the enemy. <clears throat> Yeah, right, toss taking, to and fro. taking thoughts of the wicked one. Right, and as you are the servant, taking the anointing into your world, know that that anointing can destroy the yokes off their lives. Mm, that's good. Those, those things holding them back. Right. Those things that they've gotten themselves into, taking the thoughts of the wicked one, and they can be free from it right. if they want to be free. Thank God. But they can't be if they don't want to be free. And you're not the person that's supposed to make them do anything. All right? Right. Okay. One of the Pharisees, and note, don't read over that, one of the Pharisees asked Jesus to dine with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. And behold, a woman of the town who was an especially wicked sinner, when she learned that he was reclining at table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of ointment, perfume. And standing behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears, and she wiped them with the hair of her head, and kissed his feet affectionately, and anointed them with the ointment, perfume. Now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw it, he said to himself, Okay, now where is he saying this? Out loud? No, nope, to himself. Why is he not saying it out loud? Doesn't, don't, don't everybody, whenever they have a thought come to them, they just blurt it out. Mm -hmm. No, there's some people like that, but, but they are wearing everything on the outside. Mm -hmm. This man is taught, and he's thinking to himself this. If this man were a prophet, he would surely know who and what sort of woman this is who is touching him. Now, when we go into the world and we see people that maybe have been in prostitution, mm -hmm. maybe have, have been wicked, extremely wicked sinners. Right. Th this woman, doesn't, it doesn't say here that she's a prostitute. doesn't say, what was she then? Was she a tax collector? Mm -hmm. what, what, what was she doing that was so wicked? For she is a notorious sinner a social outcast devoted to sin. Mm. And Jesus replying said to him, Simon, I have something to say to you. And he answered, teacher, say it. A certain lender of money at interest had two debtors. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. When they had no means of paying, he freely forgave them both. 
Now which of them will love him more? Simon answered, The one, I take it, for whom he forgave and canceled more. And Jesus said to him, You have decided correctly. Then turning toward the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I came into your house, you gave me no water for my feet, but she has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she from the moment I came in has not ceased intermittently to kiss my feet tenderly and caressingly. You did not anoint my head with even cheap ordinary oil, but she has anointed my feet with costly rare perfume. Therefore I tell you, her sins, many as they are, are forgiven her, because she has loved much. But he who has forgiven little, loves little. He was, the, the Pharisee Simon was blinded to his much sin. Do you, do you see, go ahead and finish reading. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Then those who were at table with him began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? But Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go enter into peace in freedom from all the distresses that are experienced as the result of sin. And we can compare that to, to what we're thinking about today when we celebrate our freedom from, from Britain. How much more that we can celebrate our freedom from the distresses that are experienced as the result of sin. Now, wow. the, this is some things. We're, we're going to go back and kind of unpack some things mm -hmm. here. Okay. As, as we look at, we're, we'll start here in the back and start going forward. But in verse 47, it says, Because she loved much, are her uh, sins forgiven. So her sins, many, are forgiven her because she loved much. Do you, do you hear that? Yeah. So sins are forgiven because you love much. But then it comes down and it says in, in verse 50, but Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. So we're talking about faith that works by love. Mm -hmm. As you see this in Galatians 5, 6, you, you see that in, in Galatians, faith worketh by love. So that we're seeing in this place, Jesus is speaking of this woman and then speaking to this woman. Right. And, and here, this is what he says to the woman. So, therefore, I tell you, her sins, he's talking to the Pharisee, her sins, many as they are, are forgiven her because she has loved much. Right. And then he says to the woman, she gets it from both sides. She understands that because she's loving much, she's been forgiven. And then she hears from Jesus, your faith has saved you. Now, if faith is such that Jesus is making much out of mm -hmm. it, faith by love is the only way it all works. Right. As we see back in, in 1 Corinthians 13, mm -hmm. the love chapter, right. we see that love is better than knowledge. Love is better than sacrifice. Right. But... None of those things work without love. And without faith. And without faith. If, if you don't believe God's a good God, that's the first thing you're supposed to learn. Right. Is, is Hebrews uh, 11, 6 that says... Um, is that the one that says it's impossible to please God without faith? Right. Yes. So it's impossible to please God without faith. So... Jesus perfectly pleased the Father right. because he had faith all of his life. He moved in faith all of his life. He perfectly pleased the Father. Now this woman is, is pleasing the Father, moving in faith, right. loving the one that came to forgive her. Do you see it? Yeah, and she was forgiven much, therefore her love for Jesus, for God, was more was much now now you see people coming out of prison people coming out of prison love much because they've been forgiven 
much. And they recognize that they've been forgiven much. Notorious sinners. Right. When they realize and receive Jesus as their Lord and their Savior, mm -hmm. they love much because they've been forgiven of so much. Right. And we see these accounts in, in Jesus' life telling of stories of, of the one that came in and owed him such a huge uh, mountain of debt that he gives this parable and says this man was was beckoned or asked and, and begged by this this his servant to forgive him of much and he forgave him of much but then he turned around not moving in love and went and caught by the throat one of his fellow servants that only owed him 20 bucks and and cast him into prison and those his friends <laughs> those around about this man told the the good man of that kingdom and and he called him back in and cast him into prison until he should pay all so he was forgiven but he wasn't moved in love he wasn't forgiven Do you see it yes those are, are, are key things mm -hmm. that we have to move toward people right. today in our day, in Every this day, July really. of the 4th, yeah. or, or wherever you are in the period of time that you're watching this, it doesn't have to be on July 4th for you to do this. That's right. But no matter when you're watching this, you move forward in faith with love. Right. Toward your fellow man. Right. Toward your God. Yeah. And as you do, you'll see these things happen in the people's lives around you and in your own life. Mm -hmm. Your love will come up more and more as you look correctly at the people around about you. Right? And many people will give thanks to God because of that. And I think that's where we're going to leave it at today. Because that's a good time to remind us all that's right. that, God that God loves, loves you. you. And, and we, we love you. you. And Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Now take your place. As you take his anointing to, to your, your world. Bye-bye. Happy 4th. Mm -hmm.